Coming up on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Montreal beckons with all its joie de vivre. Oh, good job. And its culinary delights. We still, you know, bake our bagel with wood and we still roll everything by hand. But at the Mackenzie Investments Open, there was another draw. The final full field event of the season, where there was more than just a title at stake. As long as I, I do my job, everything will kind of fall into place. We've got all that and more from Elm Ridge Country Club. I just got competitive and serious, and I remember just getting addicted to hitting golf balls. Next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The competition heats up as the final full field event of the 2019 season commences in Montreal. The Mackenzie Investments Open is the last chance for players to climb inside the top 60 on the order of merit and earn a spot in the season ending Canada Life Championship in London. And that comes with full status on the Mackenzie Tour next year. At the end of the day, it's still a golf tournament, and no matter what you have to do, it's not like you need to try any harder because you're trying hard enough to begin with. I don't need to do anything different than I have been doing. The biggest thing is sticking to what I do, and if I get in the top 60, then great. I mean, I'm right on the cusp. I'm just going to play as, as free as I can and, and not have any expectations. I was on McKenzie Tour a couple years ago, and fortunately didn't play well enough to get there, but I think that if I was able to get to London, you know, top 60 out of everybody up here, that's pretty dang good. But my aspirations are a little bit higher if we can get to there and then we can kind of build off of that and, uh, you know, hopefully get the ball rolling into Q School this fall. So as long as I, I do my job, everything will kind of fall into place. For players fighting for Corn Ferry Tour cards or just honing their skills for another season in Canada, it's clear that the competition on the McKenzie Tour raises everyone's game. I just graduated in May, and obviously, you know, the next step professional-wise is a big one. A lot of guys don't realize how crucial one shot is. Because, for example, in college, you know, you can make a bogey and you go from 10th to 11th. Out here, you make a bogey, you go from 10th to 25th. That's the top 25, that's the top 60, that's the top 5. So, it's really competitive out here, for sure. I think with being my first year up here and being my first year as a pro, that's the biggest thing that I've learned is how competitive it is and, and really how dialed and, and, and how sound you have to be with your game, both mentally and physically. I am a better player than what I was three months ago when this whole thing started. I've gotten to play with great players like Titter Pendriff and all, all these other guys and it's just exciting to be around them and learning from them every week and obviously it's been a good year. I'm playing in that tour championship next week so let's see. It's funny because I have Corn Ferry status this year and unfortunately I only got one start. Whatever I did go play that Corn Ferry event, I just realized how small the margin is, you know, and everybody knows that we got the talent to get to that next level and so uh, we're just out here trying to time it up. It's going to be a good week no matter what. Before teeing it up at the McKenzie Investments Open on sponsor exemptions, Rebecca Lee Bentham and Johan Benson stopped by the McKenzie Investments corporate office in downtown Montreal. Hello, bienvenue, how are you? Rebecca, an LPGA Tour Pro turned golf coach, was returning to her competitive roots at the professional level. She's just the third woman to tee it up on the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada, following Jacqueline Bendrick in 2016 and Caroline Co. in 2018. We're really excited to have uh, Rebecca Lee Bentham join us as one of our sponsor exemptions this year. It is really important for McKenzie Investments as we sort of move into, you know, a new world right now. It's uh, there's a lot of diversity and inclusion sort of statements being made by companies and it's something that we truly believe in at McKenzie Investments and want to ensure that we are actually practicing what we preach. It's great to see um, the women being more noticed in sports. I think it's more about kind of realizing how much you get out of the sport and so I think for me, I've learned how to work hard. I've learned uh, patience, persistence, and um, confidence through the game that I think a lot of the younger girls can get out of it. So we want to push younger girls to play. Um, and one way is to kind of have those role models and um, opportunities for girls to play. So I think it's great. We're going in the right direction. So hopefully we can keep doing um, kind of the stuff that Mackenzie is doing, kind of just putting a spotlight on females in sports. It's little things like this that are going to keep building. I appreciate that 
they invited me because it's a rare opportunity. You don't see a lot of women get to play against the men, so I'm honored and um, it's a great challenge for me just personally, so I just want to go out there and see um, what I can do. It's a big platform for her. She's a terrific player. The women's game is really, really strong, and it's, it's, it's nice to see uh, how she's going to fare against the boys. But uh, a little disadvantage to her is all the rain we've had lately. The course is going to be really soft, so it's going to be quite long for her. So that, that's the only disparity, really, between the women's and the men's is still the power game. Uh, but I'm sure she's going to do really well, and she's a great ambassador. Mackenzie Investments has been the umbrella sponsor for the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada since 2015. And in 2017, it expanded its reach with the Mackenzie Investments Open in Quebec. The event provides a unique opportunity to grow the game in the province in partnership with Golf Quebec, which recently signed on to be the host organization. Golf Quebec did an amazing job and they really took partnership with the Mackenzie Tour to put on a really good show uh, at Elmridge this year and it's nice to see their involvement and also the PGA of Quebec uh, is also involved with the tournament so so everyone is like working in the same direction for one big event. For 32 years we've been servicing financial advisors and investors here in the province of Quebec and just felt it imperative to uh, add a stop here so we could entertain people, take people golfing and just grow the sport here in the province. Next on this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Good morning. Johan Benson and Rebecca Lee Bentham continue to explore Montreal and can't resist sampling some of the city's most delicious offerings. Oh, let's devour this. And we spend some time with 34-year-old veteran Derek Barron in this week's On the Bag after the break. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Ah, Montreal, Quebec's largest city built on a marriage of two worlds, English and French traditions united as one to make any visitor feel as though they've landed in Europe. And thanks to its ever-growing gastronomy scene, Montreal offers visitors a culinary trip around the world, one to fit the palate of any foodie. As for Johan and Rebecca, their tour of Montreal wouldn't be complete without having a taste for themselves. First stop, a little deli called Schwartz's. Good morning. Welcome to Schwartz. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. How are you? I'm Rebecca. Johnny is Hi. my name. Johan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You've never been here? No, I've been Montreal. The problem you're gonna you're gonna try this one eat, you want to come back all the time. Schwartz started in 1928, and since then is growing every every year, more and more. I'm from here. So Are you from here? Yeah, I'm from the West Island of Montreal. It's okay. Schwartz is it's just a, it's a stable. It's it's the smoked meat place in the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the best smoked meat sandwich I've ever had. Yeah, like the bread was even so good, like soft, and then the mustard with the meat. Meat was juicy. That was awesome. It is smoked meat. <laughs> People who know me, they know how much I love mustard, so this is fantastic. I come here at least once a summer when I'm home in Canada, uh, here in Montreal. It's just, it's the best. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. That was very good. Merci. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be back. Definitely. Oh, this was fantastic, wasn't it? But the food tour wouldn't stop there. Next was a visit to a legendary Montreal bakery where the bagels were flying off the shelves. Hi, Rebecca. I'm Irwin. At Fairmont Bagel. Hey, Johan, nice to meet you. Can we show you a little bit about Absolutely. the bakery? Absolutely. Oh, wow, that's yeah. great. Now in its 100th year of operation, owners Erwin Schlafman and his wife Rhonda have found that the secret to success is sticking to age-old traditions. We still do what our grandfather did. Okay. You know, the same way that the bacon was made 100 years ago, you'll get the same product here. If your grandfather or grandmother came in here in the 1920s and bought bagel, they'd be getting the same bagel that you're getting today. Oh, okay. That was pretty cool. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. How many bagels do you guys make a day? Oh, geez, you know, it's always different, you know, because we roll by hand. 
we can bake around a thousand dozen a day. And we're really proud that we still, you know, bake our bagel with wood and we still roll yeah, everything by hand. You know, this is a real artisanal production place. The cinnamon raisin bagel. Thank you. This is the chocolate chip. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very awesome. much. Ooh. Oh, let's devour this. Let's devour this. Oh. Ooh, cheers. Enjoy. Enjoy your bagel. <laughs> yeah. Derek Barron is having a career season on the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The 34-year-old broke through with a victory at the Players' Cup and has climbed to seventh on the order of merit. But his rise has been anything but conventional. We caught up with the veteran in this week's On the Bag. When I was younger, my grandpa used to watch golf all the time, and I just was like, oh, <laughs> this is the most boring thing ever. The first time I stepped foot on a golf course, I was just about to turn 16. I hit one pretty straight, surprisingly, you know, just about this high, but it was straight and, and fairly far because I hit it so low. And uh, my dad was like shocked. He was like, the heck? I played in high school against Ryan Moore, Michael Putnam. Those guys were in my district. They were a little older. I just got competitive and serious. And I remember just getting addicted to hitting golf balls. I really didn't start playing a ton of tournaments until I was probably 26. My learning curve's been a little later than most guys, but disadvantage or an advantage, it just is what it is. If I had been more committed to the path of playing golf, I probably would have just went to, to college and played. But at that point, I just wanted to make money, I wanted to buy a car, you know, I wanted to have my own place, and so whatever I could do that paid decent, I did. During that time, I was playing some amateur stuff here and there, and, and so, uh, I decided to get into the section and I joined the Pacific Northwest PGA and I had some guys approach me from one of my home courses there and asked me if I wanted to, to, to do it and I said yeah because that was probably the only thing that at that point that was keeping me from it was the funding. Played Canada 2017 and did okay, kept my card and then last year was kind of a I didn't play good. I mean, I just didn't, I think I was just trying too hard. Everything was good. I just didn't score. I'm just trying to see how good I could get. I kind of have an idea of where I could go, but you gotta have that belief because your best won't come out unless you believe it's there. Now, I, you know, obviously winning takes a lot of pressure off you. I'm in a great spot to at least go straight to finals, which will give me some status, no matter what. And right now where my game's at and and just my understanding of what works for me, um, I feel like, you know, that's it's very doable to be full status if I get there. Probably Jason Day came from nothing. That's proof that you can just work hard and if you have people that help you and believe in you and invest in you, you could do it. Well, that wasn't a very good swing. Oh, I need my team already on the first hole. When most people have time off, they want to go do stuff. And when I'm at, when I'm, you know, I want to work on my house, I want to work on my yard, I want to spend time with my wife and do dinner and play with my son. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty simple, honestly. I'm kind of a Marvel geek. Like I love comics and all that superhero stuff. Oh, do it. Oh, good job there. I would just say if you believe in yourself, don't listen to anybody else. It doesn't matter what other people think. <laughs> Get that on camera. <laughs> Coming up next, we take a look at one of the McKenzie Tour's many success stories as we follow Hank Leviota's journey to the PGA Tour in The Playback. But first, before teeing it up alongside the men in Montreal, Rebecca Lee Bentham put on a clinic for local students hoping to inspire more women to tee it up themselves. I love supporting women in the sport and just to see them have fun brings me joy. All that and more after the break.
This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. So today we are going to be doing a clinic. So again, thank you so much for joining us. This is for you. So please take what you can from this. Mackenzie Investments plays a huge part in propelling Canadian golfers to the head of the pack through their sponsorship of the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. And they continue to build lasting relationships within communities across the country. It's really exciting being able to work with local universities across the country and uh, sort of entertain the finance and business students. I'm um, really sort of helping to build that pipeline for the next generation of people that will hopefully be working at Mackenzie Investments. Toronto native Rebecca Lee Bentham continued her fun-filled week in Montreal as she prepared to tee it up alongside the men on the Mackenzie Tour. It's been a lot of fun. I feel like there's a lot of support around me being here, which is great. A lot of the players are being really friendly. I got to travel to downtown Montreal, try some of the food, which is great. Uh, smoked meat, Montreal bagels. The whole experience has been a great experience. And before the start of the McKenzie Investments Open, the 27-year-old hosted a clinic for local college finance students, helping empower these women through the game of golf. I love supporting women in the sport. I feel like there aren't enough right now. And just to see them have fun brings me joy, because I know that um, they'll take it back with more confidence out when they go play. And when you hit, it's going to be still at thumb. I want it straight down the club. OK, your shoulders are going to turn, your spine's going to stay there, and just stretch. There. Look at the ball. Being involved with them now, I think will give them that confidence. Say, hey, I can, I can hit a ball and go out there and have fun with it. Oh, you got one. Okay, good job. That was awesome. On the Mackenzie Tour, it's always a great day when we can celebrate one of our own. And for Mackenzie Tour graduate Hank Libiota, a victory lap is in order as he wraps up his rookie season on the PGA Tour. In this week's Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada Playback. In 2016, at the start of his professional journey, a fresh-faced 22-year-old Hank Libiota made his McKenzie Tour debut. Flash forward a year, and he was racking up birdies and hoisting the trophy at the McKenzie Investments Open. That win would be just the boost of confidence he needed to propel him to the Corn Ferry Tour the following year. And it was certainly a pivotal season. In 2018, he racked up a runner-up and three additional top tens on the Corn Ferry Tour. But an ongoing battle with severe Crohn's disease didn't make the journey easy. I'm here right now. I'm playing with full-blown Crohn's disease. And it's remarkable that I've made it this far. I have an opportunity here, is what I kept telling myself. I have an opportunity to live outside the boundaries of Crohn's disease. And I took it. With steely resolve, Libiota found himself with a 2018-19 PGA Tour card by season's end. And here he is. His rookie season on the PGA Tour is in the books, complete with one top 10 and three top 25s. These are the journeys that we hope inspire future players on the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We get out here on the PGA Tour and we're ready to roll, and that's something the PJ Tour did so well with PJ Tour Canada as they set up the weeks just how we're going to be out here. And so I'm very fortunate to have kind of gone through the uh, PJ Tour's own developmental tours and developmental system in order to get here. And in case you were wondering, Libiota kept that tour card for the upcoming 2019-2020 season. Still to come, we've got all the action from the McKenzie Investments Open, and it's one for the history books. Watch as our winner sets the single day course record, the McKenzie Tour's relative to par record, and ties for the Tour's highest margin of victory on the way to his second win of the season. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. By this point in the season, being in the top 10 on the order of merit is the goal. But let's be honest, the real prize is in being the player of the year and earning full status for the following season of the Corn Ferry Tour. So at the start of the McKenzie Investments Open, while everyone had their bets on the top three in the order of merit, Paul Berjan, Jake Knapp, and Lawrence Chan, it would soon be clear that the real player to watch was Canada's own Taylor Pendrin. After an opening 69, followed by a pair of 62s, the 28-year-old teed it up with a five-stroke lead on Sunday. But he wasn't about to let his guard down. 
I kept my head down all day. I figured I was leading, but didn't really know by how much. With a spotless final round 67, which included five birdies and a final tap in par on 18, the Ontario native claimed his second win on the McKenzie Tour this season. To win here is awesome, and just to have such a great week and shoot 28 under feels really good, and everything kind of clicked this week. And if the win wasn't exciting enough, the victory moved Pendrith up to the number two spot on the order of merit meaning that the once out of reach number one spot was now closer than ever. Just over $5,000 closer. To be fully exempt on the Corn Ferry Tour next year would be a big relief, but you know, there's still work to do next week in London, and I know there's three or four guys who could possibly do it, so we go out and try to make as many birdies as possible and see where we end up. Holding on to number one in the order of merit is Paul Berjan. Taylor Pendrith jumps into the number two spot. Jake Knapp still has a legitimate shot at the top, as does Lawrence Chan, while Hayden Buckley rounds out the top five. Every spot counts, and these guys on the bubble fought hard to make it to the season-ending Canada Life Championship. They all earn status for the 2020 season on the McKenzie Tour. Next time on This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. We make our final stop of the season in London, Ontario for the Canada Life Championship, where the battle for Player of the Year honours comes down to the wire. Only four players have a chance to claim the elusive top spot on the Order of Merit and fully exempt status on the Corn Ferry Tour. Join us next week to see who dominates at Highland Country Club and whose tour trajectory launches them to the next step on the path to the PGA Tour. We'll see you then.